get ready for a quick quest guide for the Tybro 1i Trio quest, in which the main rewards for completing are 5,000 fishing and 5,000 cooking experience, 2,500 attack and 2,500 strength experience, a rune karam 1 poison spear, access to Tamayu's spear stall, the ability to catch and cook karam 1s, access to Taidechi's karam 1 stall, the ability to pray at the tribal statue in Tybro 1a village which will work like an altar, the ability to use Tybro 1 I teleport scrolls, and the ability to complete the smithing section of barbarian training, as well as two quest points. You'll need to have completed the Jungle Potion quest before taking on this one. And while not required, having completed a Fairy Tale Part 2 for access to Fairy Rings will help a huge amount with getting around during this quest. It'll help so much that I'd really consider doing a Fairy Tale Part 2 before taking on this quest. When it comes to skills, you'll need to have level 30 cooking, level 15 agility, and level 5 fishing. Despite this, know that if you haven't completed a Fairy Tale Part 2 or the Grand Tree quest, then you'll also need 32 agility to complete this quest. Then when it comes to items, you'll want a knife, a small fishing net, a pestle and mortar, and a tinderbox. You'll also want 3 raw karambwans, 1 4 dose agility potion, 1 spear from iron through to rune, however note that a black spear won't work, 1 of any log that you have the fire making level to burn, ranged or magic equipment to kill a level 3 monkey, Joga bones, and finally 30 coins. Then when it comes to recommended items, you'll want weight reducing armor and stamina potions to help with all the running around. Bring two stamina potions if you have access to fairy rings and around four if you don't. You'll also want an anti-poison potion just in case you become poisoned while traveling during this quest. And additionally, a little bit of backup food can come in handy as well for dealing with aggressive enemies and potentially failed agility obstacles. For teleports, you'll want a charged amulet of glory for teleports to Karumja and by extension Brimhaven. Though also consider bringing along 3 Brimhaven teleports if you have 40 construction and 3 scrolls of redirection from the nightmare zone. Or house teleports if your house is located in Brimhaven. If you're using fairy rings, then rather than 3 Brimhaven teleports, just bring along 1. If you have access to fairy rings, you'll also want your Draman staff and 3 teleports to a fairy ring. I'll be using South Graveyard Teleports to access the Fairy Ring just northeast of it. If you don't have access to Fairy Rings and have completed the Grand Tree, then you'll also want a Charged Ring of Dueling for easy access to Gnome Gliders. Now before officially starting this quest, we'll need to do some prep work, and for this you'll want to start out at any furnace, such as the one in Edgeville. Here be careful not to bury your Joga bones, and then right click and use them with the furnace to obtain burnt Joga bones. And following this, use your Amulet of Glory to teleport to Karamja before picking a banana from the many banana trees nearby and then running south to the pub. Here trade with Zembo and purchase one Karamjan rum for 30 coins. Now now use your knife on your banana to obtain sliced banana, and then being careful not to eat it, right click and use your sliced banana on the Karumjan rum to add it to it. Next, we need to travel to the Karamwanji fishing spots in Deep Karumja located south of the Taibwo 1A village. The easiest way to get there is to teleport to any fairy ring, so I'll be using a south graveyard teleport and running northeast, before then using the CKR fairy ring code to get to the spot. But you can also run from where you currently are in Karumja by going a long ways west and then south. A Brimhaven teleport can also speed this up a little bit too if you have access to it. Once you arrive, fish up at least 30 raw Karumwanji from the lake nearby, which should only take a short moment. However, with lower fishing levels, it'll take a tad longer. Once you have them, then you'll want to use your pestle and mortar on them to obtain one Karumwanji paste. You only need one, so cancel this interaction by clicking somewhere to avoid making extra. Then use the Karambwanji paste on your burnt Joga bones to create pasty Joga bones. Next, use your tinderbox with your logs to light a fire, and then use your pasty Joga bones on the fire to obtain marinated Joga bones. Following this, cook your three raw Karambwans on the fire too. Provided that you don't burn them, you should obtain poison Karambwan. You only need one, but having three was just insurance in case any burnt. Now use your pestle and mortar on your poison Karambwan to obtain Karambwan paste, and then use this paste on your spear to poison it. 
The prep work is now done, and you'll want to run north and a little northwest to the quest start just above Taibo Wanai village. After climbing up a ladder, you'll find a man named Timfriku. Talk to Timfriku and begin by saying, I'm a wandering wayfarer, before then adding, Trifitus sent me, and continuing. When the chat pauses, just stand and wait for it to resume, and then ask, so far? And after Timfriku asks you to return his sons to the village, select yes to officially begin in the quest and then finish off the chat. Now you'll need to go to Lubufu at the fishing spots in Brimhaven. A Brimhaven or house teleport if your house is located there is the best option, but alternatively you can just exit from the house and run north to this spot. After you arrive, talk to Lubufu and say, I wasn't going anywhere, and skip through the chat. Then talk to Lubufu again and now select, talk about him, then what do you do, and after, how old are you, and following this, I could help collect the bait, and then finally, you sound like you could do with the help, before then space barring through the rest of the chat. Now talk to Lubufu again to hand him 20 karambwanji, and afterwards talk to him another time and ask, what do you use to catch karambwan, before going through the chat. After this, talk to him once again and ask, what do you do with your Karambwan? And then wait until he continues the chat where he should ask you to become his apprentice. I found this a little odd though, and so if he doesn't ask you, then chat to him again and ask, what do you use to catch Karambwan once again? And generally just keep asking him questions until he pauses in the chat and asks you to become his apprentice. Then after a little more chatter, select yes. Once you've said yes, then continue through the rather long chat, after which he'll hand you a Karambwan vessel. Following this, use a raw Karambwanji on the vessel to fill it, and then drop the vessel and speak to Lubufu again, and begin by saying, Actually, I've lost my Karambwan vessel, followed by, it floated away, to be given another one. Now pick up the vessel on the floor, and in total you should have two, with one of them being filled. Now we need to go to the northeast area of the main Karamja mainland. The easiest way is to teleport to a fairy ring, and I'll be using my south graveyard teleport before running northeast and then take the ring to the DKP code. You can also run there, which is very long and requires 32 agility to cross the log obstacles, and a midway option if you've completed the Grand Tree is to use a Ring of Dueling to Emmy's Arena before running west and taking the Gnome Glider to Karamja and running north. After arriving, pick up the seaweed from along the shore and then speak to Taitechi just northeast of the fairy ring. And following the chat, use your field Karambwan vessel on Taitechi and go through the dialogue, before then waiting for him to fish. After he catches one, he'll talk to you. And you'll then want to select yes to accept his offer before going through the rest of the dialogue. Now you need to head to the mine in the middle of the large Karamja island mass, either by taking the fairy ring to the CKR code and running northeast, or by running south and taking the agility shortcut west with 32 agility before running further west. After arriving, use your ranged or magic weapon to kill a monkey nearby and then pick up the monkey corpse that it drops. Then talk to Tamayu nearby and go through the dialogue. Afterwards, speak to Tamayu again and firstly ask, when will you succeed? And afterwards, select yes to begin a cutscene whereby he fails to defeat a cat thing before blaming his spear. Now use your Karambwan poison spear on him to give it to him. And then being careful not to drink it, right click and use your four doses agility potion on him to hand it over as well. Now talk to Tamayu again and say, take me on your next hunt for the Shaikahan, which will prompt another cutscene whereby he wins against the Shaikahan. Talk to Tamayu again and he will agree to meet you in the village. Next, use your monkey corpse on Tamayu to have him skin it, and then use your seaweed on the monkey skin to obtain a seaweed sandwich. Be careful not to accidentally eat this. Now run southwest a little ways, continuing past the fairy ring to the bridge to Khan Isle. Climb the rocks and then cross the bridge, praying that you don't fall off and take damage, and then talk to Tinsei and spacebar through a rather long chat. When the chat pauses, just stand still until it pops back up, and again continue through it. Then talk to Tinsei and select yes before continuing through the chat, standing still during the pause while he asks for the next thing. Now talk to Tinsei again and select yes to hand over the seaweed sandwich. And after a rather long amount of dialogue, he will again pause. And you'll want to stand still until he asks for marinated joga bones. 
After the chat, talk to Tinze for one final time and select yes to hand over the marinated Joga bones. And after a pause where he eats them, continue through the chat. Now use your Karam One vessel on Tinze and spacebar through the dialogue. And after a short pause, he will hand you a crafting manual. Next, we need to return back to Taidechi, who is right nearby the DKP fairy ring. I'll be using a South Graveyard teleport before running northeast to the ring and traveling to the DKP fairy ring. Fairy rings are by far the best way to reach him, but alternatively you can use gnome gliders or as a last resort run there from Khan Isle. Talk to Taidechi and spacebar through the chat, whereby you'll hand over the manual and he'll agree to return to the village. And following this, it's time to return back to Timfraku at the quest start. Using the nearby fairy ring to the CKR code and running north is a really good option, as is using a Brimhaven teleport and running south. Alternatively, you can run straight there from your current location by using the agility shortcut south before running west. After arriving at Tim Fraku's house, chat to him and say, Oh, it was nothing really, even though it really was a lot, before BAM! Quest complete. But while you're awarded two quest points, we now need to go properly claim the other quest rewards. To do this, head down the ladder and go south into the village and enter the southwestern hut. Talk to Taidechi inside and go through the chat. Then head over to the middle hut and talk to Tinze and go through the chat. And finally, move over to the eastern hut before talking to Tamayu and going through the chat. After all of these chats are completed, you'll have gained 5,000 fishing and 5,000 cooking experience, 2,000 2500 attack and 2500 strength experience a rune Karam 1 poison spear, access to Tamayu's spear stall, the ability to catch and cook Karam 1s, access to Taidechi's Karam 1 stall, the ability to pray at the tribal statue in Taibo 1i village which will work like an altar, the ability to use Taibo 1i teleport scrolls, and the ability to complete the smithing section of barbarian training. So there's heaps of rewards that aren't really mentioned, plus of course the two quest points. Thanks so much for watching, catch you in the next quest!